Hello, my name is Leopoldo Armesto and in this presentation I'm going to talk about the intelligent house and particularly about the kitchen. So this is the outline of the presentation. I will talk about the aim of a kitchen and present some of the designs of, that we use for this kitchen, how, where you can download uh, those designs. Also then I will introduce and present the electronics that we use for this house and then provide a specific uh, details on the electronics such as the gas sensor, the flame sensor and the passive buzzer that we use within this uh, kitchen. And at the end of the presentation I will present the circuit diagrams that we will use in order so to connect uh, the electronic components. So uh, the aim of the kitchen is on the one side to detect smoke and also to prevent fire. Uh, for that the kitchen includes a gas sensor so we can detect the smoke and also it includes a flame sensor we can detect uh, the presence of fire, heat. Uh, the kitchen uh, window is controlled with a servo so we can open it and close in case of fire or smoke. In case of fire we will close the window while in case of smoke if there's no fire of course then we will keep it open. And then we use the buzzer you know, as an alarm system in order to, to warn uh, the user. So this, uh, this is the design of our kitchen. You, here in these URLs you can, uh, you can download uh, the, or you can find Tinkercad models uh, about our kitchen. And also uh, you can find models uh, of print, printable parts that you can use in order to decorate the kitchen. And these are the electronics that we use for our uh, kitchen. Uh, we have an MQ2 gas sensor. Uh, like this one. Then we have a flame sensor, it's KY, it's a KS sensor 026. Also we have a passive buzzer module which is KY uh, 006. And then we use a standard SD90 servo and some uh, cables in order to connect the elements. So now let's focus on how things work. Okay, so MQ sensors are known as chemiresistors and they can use to detect a variety of gases. Uh, the sensor, it, we, inside the sensor we can find some kind of tubular shape uh, sensing element that is made from aluminum oxide and um, basically this uh, element contains uh, a coil that it's used in order to heat the sensor. So essentially it has six pins, two, for them are for, uh, two of them are for the coil to heat the, the sensor but then it also includes two additional uh, wires that are used in order to measure small current variations uh, of this uh, tubular shape element. The idea or the working principle of this sensor is that in the presence of clean air, oxygen particles are absorbed uh, when the, 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 the tin is heated and that attracts uh, electrons as you can see here so that, the, uh, that means that the current through the sensor it's, uh, it's small. While if there's some kind of combustible gas, then this, uh, the amount of these oxy oxy oxygen particles is reduced and then that increases uh, the resistance of the sensor and accordingly the, the current uh, gets lower. Sorry, uh, no, it, it reduces the resistance of the sensor and then the, the, the current uh, increases, sorry, just the opposite. So in particular, uh, we use MQ2 sensor, but there are other kind of sensors and each of them are sensitive to different kind of gases. LPG, smoke, alcohol, propane, whatever. Depending on our application, we can propose to use one sensor or another, but the working principles are basically the same. So in order to actually use these sensors, these kind of sensors, the sensing element must be hot. So that means that we need to wait for a time uh, in order to uh, get stable measurements uh, if we want to uh, sense the, the gas or the presence of the smoke until the tin is uh, hot enough. So it has two outputs, one analog output and one digital output. The analog output is basically proportional to the gas concentration while the digital output it's basically it's using a comparator so that with a potentiometer we can uh, adjust this, the sensitivity of the sensor. So we will get the digital output activated or not depending on this uh, potentiometer. 
Indeed, here you can um, you can see uh, this comparator, a similar uh, working principle, but in this case with the flame sensor. We will talk about that. So the flame sensor, it's, it uses a phototransistor that detects radiation from any hot body, and uh, it's based on a, the, 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 the phototransistor. It's, it's known as YG1006, uh, and it's a high-speed and high-sensitive NPN silicon phototransistor. That means that it, the changes are almost immediate, and it provides also a analog output and a digital output as the gas sensor, exactly the same way. And it uses also a uh, LM393 uh, comparator. So here you have the, the circuit diagram of this uh, flame sensor. And this phototransistor, the output of it will, this, this signal here, the, the voltage will vary depending on the amount of heat that we receive here. And this output here is compared with, uh, uh, with this value here, which is the output of the potentiometer. And if it's high or small, that will activate or deactivate the digital output that we have here. So as part of the sensor uh, pins, we have uh, the analog output and the digital output. And this is exactly or basically the same uh, uh, diagram uh, used for the gas sensor. And also a buzzer. A buzzer, it's an, it's an element that creates sound waves. Uh, by making a metal disc, by, uh, generating vibrations on a metal disc. Uh, this is uh, possible because we apply a current uh, to a coil, to a wire coil, that using the magnetic inductance generates uh, attraction of, of this uh, metal disc that generates those vibrations. And we can distinguish between active buzzers and passive buzzers. Active buzzers, we just simply need to provide power to them and they will start beeping with a fixed frequency, usually it's about two kilohertz, and in, internally they have an oscillator. While passive buzzers, they, they do not have this oscillator, so that, that means that we need to generate the frequency through some kind of PWM or analog signal uh, in order to vibrate the buzzer at the given frequency. The, the advantage is that we can vary this frequency in order to generate different kind of tone and pitches of the sound. We usually use some kind of uh, limiting resistor, uh, about 100 ohms in series uh, with the buzzer. So this is the proposed uh, circuit or connection diagram uh, that we, we propose for the kitchen. Uh, we have the gas sensor connected to this pin here, this analog pin. The, then we have uh, the flame sensor, which is connected to the digital uh, input uh, from point of view of of the Arduino, of course. And then we have uh, the buzzer, which it is connected to a PWM uh, signal. And then we have a, a servo, which is connected to actually a digital output signal. And these are the equivalent Tinkercad circuits that we will use along the presentations. So in order to use the gas sensor, we need to, uh, in Tinkercad, we use this sensing element here, and we need to do the proper connections, but in the end, we will have a signal here that we will use in order to measure the gas concentration. For the flame sensor, we use this element here. It's a photoresistor, a phototransistor, that using the LM393 comparator, um, a couple of resistors here, and a potentiometer that will fix to a specific value here, then by modifying the radiation of this sensor, we will get as an output here, a digital active signal that will activate or deactivate accordingly. And then the buzzer uses this element here in Tinkercad together with a, a resistor. And by generating a PWM signal here, we can control the sound of this frequency. So this is uh, the presentation in which we have introduced the intelligence house and particularly the kitchen. Thank you very much.